What is a grid or grid spot? And what do I need it for? Hi, I'm Brian Glenn with Photo Tip Obsession. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite modifiers for modifiers. This is called a grid or a grid spot. And basically the point of a grid is to focus light, kind of like a snoot, but in a different way. I'm a control freak when it comes to lighting. I like as many different options as I can for control, and this is one of the most versatile by far. The point of a grid is to block light and focus the remaining light coming out into a tight beam. Now these come in different sizes. You'll see them in different degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. What that is referring to is the degree of the light cone that is left coming out of the light. These go into a standard reflector, such as this one here. You have your light. This happens to be a Alien B. But the way they work is exactly the same, doesn't matter what equipment you're using. So you put your reflector on. And in this bare mode, the cone of light coming out is approximately 150, 160 degree spread, and obviously very large swath of light. Certainly usable in certain circumstances, but as far as control, as far as needing just a hair light or just an accent light on part of a product, absolutely useless. You're getting light everywhere. So how do you limit the light? One way is to use a snoot. A snoot, which I'll go over in a separate video, makes a cone on the end of the reflector and it, it makes a very, very small shaft of light. And those are very useful too, but they're very, very small and they're for an extreme control effect. Grids are much more versatile because they have a much larger light. The actual cone starts out the same diameter as your reflector, which is a generous amount. So the way they work is they simply snap in and they have a little metal tab here that's just for pressure. And it fits in this groove. That's what this groove is for in the inside of the reflector. You just put it in, squish it down, and it stays in. That's it. Now this is made out of metal. It's very heat resistant. So you can use it with your modeling lights and not have to worry about anything melting. And it's kind of like a honeycomb pattern. And you can see you can only see through it at certain angles. Likewise, only certain amounts of light are able to escape. And like I said, these work by blocking light, so they are increasingly inefficient as they step down in degree size. So a 40 degree grid is letting out more light. You're getting a, a more pronounced light source compared to a 10 degree, which is only a quarter the beam size, so you're getting even less light coming out of it. That means you're going to need more power. If you need a ton of light and a very small beam size, you're going to need a very large light unit to power it. So let's go in and look at the difference between the different sizes so you can get an actual feel for what they actually do. Okay, here I'm going to show the difference between all the grid spots. What I have on now is one light with no grid spot on it, just a standard reflector. So you can see that there's a very even wash. This light is just below frame on the left. Here, I'll show you where they are. I've got one here and then one right here. Now there's only about a foot and a half height difference. They are tilted just slightly. So the light beams themselves are going to be completely even on the background. And these are set exactly five feet from the bulb to the backdrop. So we've got a pretty normal size spread that you would be using as a hair light or something like that or product work. You're not going to be too far much, too much farther back using a grid spot than five, six feet. That's about the normal size range. So let's go ahead and pop in a grid. I'm going to show the difference first between the 10 and the 20 degree. Here we can clearly see the difference between on the left, the 10 degree and on the right, the 20 degree grid. Again, these are five feet back from the light to the backdrop. I measured the actual visible edge of both of these lights. At this distance, the 10 is giving about a foot and a half spread, and you get about two and a half feet out of the 20 degree grid. 
Now there isn't a huge difference in light output at this range. These are both the same 150 watt modeling lights. So you can get a, a pretty good idea of what you're going to get out of this using it for whatever applications you need. I'm going to go ahead and switch it out now and we'll see the difference between the 20 and the 30 degree grid. Here we can see I've replaced the 10 degree that was on the left with the 30 degree. So you still have the same 20 degree shown on the right and we've seen a marked increase in the size to the spread of the 30 degree. Now you've gone well over four feet at this range with this degree grid. So you're getting not quite a controlled spotlight as more like a controlled flagged light. This still has a nice solid drop off on the edges, but a very wide multi-use spread of light. I probably use this grid the most. This was one of the first I purchased before I bought a whole set. And this is very useful because you can easily feather it. Sometimes you don't need actual control 360 degrees around your beam of light. You just need it basically hard flagged. If you're doing a portrait and you need a hair light, it's really no big deal if it spills over to the front of the person as long as it's hitting the parts of them that matter. So you don't necessarily need to use a 10. You can use a 30. The benefits are you get a lot easier control having that larger spread and it's a little more forgiving. I'm going to go ahead and replace the 20 degree shown on the right with the 40 degree and that's probably going to light up most of the backdrop. And now here we can see the difference going from the 30 degree shown on the left to the 40 degree shown on the right. And the 40 degree, while again you have nice lines, you can see them in the upper and lower parts of the frame towards the center where it actually starts to cut, it's still nice and controlled but a very large light source. So again, more like a flagged light or something you get from a gridded softbox than a beam of light or anything resembling a snoot where a 10 or even pushing a 20 degree, you could substitute the look of a snoot with such a grid. Now, one thing to note when you're using these, the smaller they go, the more light they're blocking. And that light doesn't simply disappear. It's dissipating as heat. They really, really build up inside the light. So you do not want to be using a 10, 20, even a 30 degree grid with full on modeling lights for any long periods of time, especially anywhere that is heat sensitive or might be flammable. These get really hot. They actually will smoke the 10 degree grids, especially if you have them behind or in front of a very hot modeling light and you go and pull that out. Sometimes the coating will actually be smoking hot. They will burn your fingers. You have to watch everything, especially when you're taking them out. Get the modeling light off, let it cool off before you try to pull it out. So now that we've seen what the different grid sizes look like in actual application, what else can you do with grids? You can use them for modeling hair lights, accent lights on a product, just putting a wash over somebody's shoulders, anywhere you need that kind of nice tight control. They're not just for standard reflectors though. They do make them for specialty reflectors. This is a larger unit. They make them for beauty dishes, up to 20, almost 30 inches in size. They also make grids. This is another one of my favorite modifiers for modifiers. For regular soft boxes, this is a large soft box and it has a Velcro grid on it. Just like the regular reflector grids, this one will only show light from certain angles. So you get the soft quality of the light from the soft box, but it's controllable. You don't have the spill without the grid on. These are very inexpensive. They simply Velcro on. This happens to be uh, another Alien B or Pulsy Buff brand foldable soft box. And it snaps right in. I think I paid 40 bucks for the grid. Totally cheap, totally worth it. So I hope that really helps you understand what the grid spots are all about, how to use them, and inspires you to use them more in your work. Get out there, have some fun with lighting, and we'll see you next time.